Welcome to my channel guys, my name is Josie and I'm a graphic designer and today we're making this. I have something to say, okay? I feel like this trend is everywhere, every brand is doing like a 3D keychain render of their branding and it's forced. I'll just say, I'll just come out and say, I feel like it's forced, I feel like it's kind of a bit, why are we doing this? Um, but the paychecks are still being paid and they're still being cut. Okay, so we're gonna make this ourselves today and you can use any design that you want. It just has to be an SVG, really simple colors. And I wanted it to look like a very classic kind of enamel keychain, like one of these, um, which you see obviously in like gift shops and everything. So I wasn't feeling very creative. I didn't know what to do. So I just made mine using my favorite emoji designs, but obviously you can use your logo. You can use any brand assets that you want or just anything cute. So we are gonna jump into the voiceover for part one. This is my illustrator file with each of the charms. So what I did is I took the pen tool and I traced images of these emojis and then I expanded them so that they would be shapes. What you're gonna do is have a separate artboard for each of your colors. So this is gonna be the metal color, this is peach, this is green, and this is brown. And it's just really important when you're making SVG files that all of the paths are closed and unified. So if I click on this here, you can see it's completely unified and flat. The colors don't matter because when you export them into Blender, they're gonna be black anyways, but this is just how I've sorted them. So what you're gonna do is just go to File, Export, Export As, Go down to SVG and click use artboards and you can either export them all or whatever ones you want to export. Okay, in Blender, I'm importing all of my SVGs. So click import and SVG. And then some of the colors, they're going to be separated because they're not touching. So make sure to join, for example, with the slices here, I join those. And don't move anything as you're doing this just because you want them to stack perfectly like they were in your Illustrator artboards. But convert those all to a mesh and make sure to set your origins to the center of the geometry and that'll just make things easier when you move stuff around. First you want to extrude all the faces up. I'm not dealing with the topology, I'm just going to keep it as it is. But after you've extruded then you can make it whatever thickness you want and I just typed in my thickness so that all of the keychains I made were going to be uniform. And of course you want your line work to be a little bit thicker than the other stuff, just so that it kind of sticks out and has a texture to it. Now for the material, I used a metallic shader for the line work and I already have an environment imported. I just have a transparent background happening right now. And then I just used a principal BDSF and I changed the colors and have like a slight metallic and a low roughness. Just keeping the same settings but different colors for all of the rest of the parts of the emoji. For this kind of joining loop, I wasn't sure what shape I wanted it to be, but I decided to make it flat like the rest of the emoji. Um, one thing you can do is incorporate that as part of your illustration. So just make that line work, have an added like circle to hook the chains onto. Um, but yeah, I did this separately. So I just made a circle and I filled that face. Then I inset that, deleted the center and extruded it. And then I joined it with the rest of the emoji and I just made it slightly thinner than the rest of it. So it was kind of its own separate part. And these are all of the emojis together. Aren't they cute? Okay, I have an add-on from Gumroad that allows you to import images as stickers and like have some distress to it. So I'll link that down below. Um, but I just download the key and the key ring from the internet, different places. Uh, I'll link those for you as well, they're free. Thank you. 
I chose to do this using rigid body physics, which is entirely optional. You may want to make your chains and put them along a curve and just have it still, but I liked using rigid body physics. I tried, I did everything guys, I tried everything to do an animation with all of the charms and it just exploded every single time. However, it does still look really good with just one. If you just want to show one off as like a product mock-up or something, uh, but this can be a little bit tricky and it's all a lot of trial and error. What I ended up doing in the end was taking some still frames and I would begin the animation just to get the chains falling a bit and to get a sense of like how that physics would work because it does make it look a lot more realistic, but this can be quite complex, especially considering the topology of my objects is really crazy from those SVGs and I was not going to remesh them or anything. Um, but if you have objects that have a lot better topology, then it'll probably work better for you. And to make my chains, I just made a torus and then extruded it out a bit because I didn't want it to be like a perfect circle. I want it to be kind of a chain shape. Um, but one thing that will just make everything look more realistic is if you notice on keychains, there's all sorts of rings of different sizes and kind of shapes. So when in doubt, just like throw in a couple more toruses and like different shapes and it'll look more realistic. For the rigid body simulation, it's really important that you have it set as the collision shape to a mesh and you just want the ones that are moving to be having the dynamic checked and the ones that are not moving to have that unchecked or change those type from active to passive. And I played around with this physics a ton. I used a ton of different settings. Um, I think in the end I like bumped the friction up all the way and I changed the weight to be like 0.2 kilograms, but it depends on the scale. So if things are not working out and you're not sure why, there's a couple things you can do. So you can change the scale of the objects up and down. You can also make sure that your modifiers are applied or just like take a look at your modifiers that can give you an idea of what's happening. Or you can also click shift A and apply the scale to your object. So these are all a couple things that you could try. Now I'm kind of awkwardly trying to put everything on the keychain and do this physics. You are seeing one version of this. I did this like 12 times guys. Okay, like I did this so many times and it would just be boring to show you all the footage. So this is kind of the final time that I did it, but I spent a lot of times doing different variations of these keychains, permutations, whatever. Um, the arrangement of them and everything. So this is like a really edited version. So if it takes you a long time to do this, don't be surprised. And if it doesn't take you a long time to do this, then I don't want to hear about it.
Now I'm over here rendering and setting up the render. You will see that I used a plane as my background. In the final render, I actually rendered this as a transparent PNG and put it on top of a gradient image in Photoshop, which made it a lot brighter and just more colorful. Um, but of course, if you want to use a plane, uh, this is how I did that. And I also added a gradient to it and you'll see that in my shaders. You can see I'm just trying to find the right frame where I like the way that they're falling. Guys, you gotta admit, this is cute, okay? This is cute. So this is my final outcome. I hope this was useful. If it was, then subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.